in this study, we randomized people uh, to either placebo or a bioavailable form of curcumin that I'll describe in just a moment. We had 40 participants who ranged in age from 51 to 84. And uh, the dose of the curcumin from uh, the product called Theracurmin was 90 milligrams of curcumin twice a day or placebo. And we checked blood levels of the curcumin to make sure people were cooperating and they weren't cheating. We didn't want our control group to go out and eat a lot of curried food during the study and they were cooperative. Now Theracurmin is uh, an interesting compound or interesting product. It, uh, the, it has a uh, hundred times smaller particles than what one sees in regular curcumin extracts. And so this very small particle size helps with intestinal absorption. And what attracted us to this particular product were studies showing that theracurmin is 27 times higher levels in the blood when compared with other forms of curcumin power, powder. Now, when we uh, obtained samples of theracurmin, we wanted to convince ourselves that it was bioavailable. And so we did this study with 10 volunteers who consumed curcumin. And you can see that for theracurmin, the area under the curve, the plasma curcumin, is very high compared to other products like Mariva or the GNC product that we studied. So this reassured us that we were working with the right form of curcumin to really test our hypotheses. Here you see information on the baseline characteristics of the subjects who consume theracurmin versus those who consume placebo. On average, they were in their early 60s. Uh, the Theracurmin group was slightly more educated, so we controlled for the higher education and the statistical testing. Uh, and we had about uh, 40 or so percent of the sample had MCI. The rest had normal aging. They uh, also tended to have a family history of dementia. And in the general population, uh, the ApoE4 genetic risk occurs in about 20% of people. We had a slightly higher percentage, which often reflects what happens in these studies where people have a family history of dementia and that gets them interested in getting involved. So in terms of our primary outcome measures, we looked at verbal memory, visual memory. We, uh, a secondary measure was looking at attention. And we were also interested in mood because previous studies had shown some effects of curcumin on improving symptoms of depression. Now you're probably familiar with statistical testing uh, using p-values where you have a p-value of 0.05 as statistically significant. But we also looked at a measure called the effect size, which tells us uh, a measure from zero to one of the effect of the active ingredient compared to the placebo. And generally in these studies, an effect size of up to 0.2 is considered small, moderate is 0.3 to 0.5, and a strong or large effect size is above 0.6. To put this in perspective, many of the drugs that have been approved for treatment of Alzheimer's dementia have effect sizes that are relatively small, about 0.2 to 0.3. And here's a summary of uh, the results from our memory measures. Uh, verbal memory and visual memory, we saw significant results after 18 months. The placebo group didn't show that much of a change. And you can also see that these are moderate effect sizes. So across all these measures, it gave, it reassured us that we're really seeing a, an effect on cognition. It's just not one individual test. Now to give you a perspective with one of the uh, verbal memory tests, the Bushke selective reminding test, you can see that here is the 
uh, their Kerman group versus the placebo group. And after six months, the groups separate, continue to separate, and that continues to improve over the 18 month period. And here uh, we see results from attention and mood. Also, these were significant. And just to summarize the different memory and attention results uh, comparing the placebo versus the curcumin group, you can see there's a really uh, compelling results. We do a lot of studies. I saw some of the previous research. We look at nutrition, we look at exercise, we do memory training studies, and we often see effects, but it's rarely uh, do we see effect sizes of 0.5 and 0.6. So that impressed us that something was positive going on. What about the brain scan results with FDDMP? It turns out that two regions, the amygdala and the hypothalamus, showed effects in the direction that we expected, so that there was a greater accumulation uh, of amyloid and tau in those brain regions. And here we can see uh, for the amygdala that in the Thera-Kerman group, there was actually less binding after 18 months and an increase in binding in the placebo group. With the hypothalamus, uh, there was a slightly less, but not significantly less binding in the Thera-Kerman but an increase in the placebo. And if you look at the between group differences, you can see an effect size of 0.55. And this, this just gives you some of the individual results with the PET scan measures in the uh, amygdala, in the placebo group, and in the therapeutic group.